Hey there, uh, Michael again. Uh, this is a continuation of the, uh, the series of um, videos on price action patterns that I like to trade. Uh, again, this is Michael. I'm the Options Strategy Instructor here at OptionsPlayers.com. Today is January 6, 2022. Uh, first off, as before, I'm going to give a little disclaimer. Uh, OptionsPlayers.com is not investment advisor advisory service. Uh, we're not registered investment advisors or broker dealers and do not purport to tell to or, or suggest which securities you should buy or sell for yourselves. Okay. You should always check with your licensed financial advisor or your tax advisor to determine the suitability of any investment. As always, there is a high degree of risk in trading. Screenshot this sucker, understand it uh, so that you know that uh, the risk that you're taking is your risk. Um, and there are going to be losses uh, along with the wins, but uh, hopefully there's going to be more wins than losses. But just uh, keep it real, position size in the right way so that you keep your risk to a minimum and your profits higher. Okay, what I'm going to do in this particular video, which is part two of our consolidation pattern, so I'm going to talk about triangles. Um, now, there's a lot of talk about triangles out there on the market and people that trade them. And I just want to go into maybe a few of the basics. First of all, when I talk about triangle, <clears throat> I'm talking about all types of triangles. Anything that has a three point um, type of, of triangle it can be a, uh, you know, a, what do you call it? A triangle like this. It can be a triangle like this, that's a triangle, and then we can have also an isosceles triangle. So these are all triangles, okay? And what we're talking about is is a pricing um, pattern in stocks and equities or other asset classes as well that consolidate with with higher higher lows and lower highs up to an apex. Um, sometimes in a, a, um, a triangle like this, what you're talking about is you basically have higher lows, but the, I'm sorry, higher high, uh, lower highs, but your lows are gonna be kind of even, okay? It's still a triangle. And eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a breakout. So usually what happens is a triangle is going to form after you have a good run up or a good rundown. These are really kind of the ideally the patterns that I'm looking for personally. But what's happening is, is you are consolidating after a run. Okay, you're either consolidating after it's run up or you're consolidating when it runs down. And then you're going to make a decision on whether uh, or the, the price of the stock or the equity or the asset class is going to make a decision at some point, usually near the apex, is going to make a decision to either continue going up or break down, one of the two. And that's the same thing on the, you know, after a run down, it's either going to decide to go back up or it's going to decide to continue down. So you get this coiling action uh, that basically coils and it's like a spring and kaboom, it just goes. It, 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 uh, it, the spring un it is undone and you either go up or you go down. Okay, so you got a springing action, you know, the price comes down up uh, da, 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 and then kaboom goes. Now, there are many traders that trade directionally on breakouts. My personal preference is to trade non-directional. I've got my own reasons because of my own style, but it is perfectly valid to, uh, to trade triangles tri uh, directionally on a breakout. I personally don't do that too much because they tend to be more prone to false breakouts and I'm not able to control it because I am not awake during market open as since I live on a, on a, on a little island um, in, the, uh, in the Andaman Sea just off the coast of Malaysia. Okay, that's my personal preference. I'm going to show you here in this particular video really more how it works to do it directionally. Okay, so what are the conditions of triangles? Well, first of all, you're going to have a move up. Or down, uh, you know, you move down is going to be exact opposite. But a triangle is usually going to have, uh, it's going to have at least three points on each side. So you can see, you're going to kind of visualize it. It kind of looks like a triangle if if, you, if you're able to fill this in. But you have point one on the bottom side it goes up, comes down. You got a lower high. You got a, I'm sorry, you got a higher higher low. You got a lower high. You got a higher low. And then you kind of 
go like this, okay? And ideally, you're going to keep going, and then you're going to get uh, kaboom or kaboom, one of the ways, okay? Either way. So this is usually what I'm looking for. I'm visualizing triangles after I do a particular sort. I'll show you what the sort is that I do, okay? So the ideal trade, if you're going to just do a directional, is to go long or short on a breakout from the third point in the triangle. So you can see that we had one, two, three. So that's the breakout level. Or one, two, three. That's the breakout level. And you don't want to place orders. You don't want to, you don't want to trade this if you think you're getting a breakout on a candle that's down here because you haven't really surpassed that, 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 uh, that lower high. You, you want to get past that lower high or you want to get past that higher low on the other side. Okay. Um, so what the general way to do this is, is you put in what's called a one cancels other contingent order to buy calls or puts. So you put an order contingent on, let's just say that's uh, that's 105 and let's just say that's 95. You put a contingent order to buy calls if th this particular asset class reaches 105, okay, th this particular stock. Uh, by the way, this is Apple. Um, so you place a contingent order to buy a call, uh, whatever strike you're going to go for, whatever um, whatever expire you're going to go for. Uh, now, I do like to, me personally, I like to go out about 45 days because sometimes it takes a little longer for these things to go, but... That's just me. Um, you can go earlier if you like. It depends on your on your trading cell. So what what one cancel others does is it, your contingent order will go in to buy the call at the market. Okay, so it's going to be a market order. Uh, that market order is released to the market if the stock reaches one hundred five or whatever the price is. Um, you're also going to have a second order in that buys a put. Um, it's a market order for the put. Market order for the put gets released if the stock reaches your level. Okay, and if one of one of those is filled, it automatically cancels the other one. So that's a one cancels other contingent order to buy calls or puts. And we want to place those orders above the uh, the lower high or below the most recent lower low in what the triangle is that we think that we're we're we're, uh, we're going for. Okay. Um, there is definitely an added risk of false breakouts, which then we're forced to exit. And psychologically, that's tough because we've we've got in our minds that that uh, oh, this is the thing; it's going to break out. We're coiling; it's really going to go. And it's tough to psychologically get over the fact that you're wrong. Okay, so that's just understand that you can be wrong in this type of directional trade. It's a little bit more frequent because there are definitely false breakouts of. of of, um, of triangles because guess who can see these triangles? They're market makers and they love to trick retail traders in into going a direction on a uh, potential breakout when really the breakout may go the other direction. Okay. So, and that's actually one of the reasons that I prefer to go non-directional with either straddles or strangles, especially if the apex of that assumed triangle is out, you know, less than five days okay but that's again that's my personal preference i'm really only going to cover the uh, the directional side of things because uh, you get into the straddles and strangles there's a little bit more complexity and something that we go through in the swing trading course so again one cancels other contingent orders to buy calls or puts um, but you can see that order is kind of hanging out there okay it doesn't mean we've entered it's just going to get triggered if we happen to get above or below and you can see that's the next day we're still in the triangle. And there, look, you've got a breakout of our assumed triangle because you know what? This is an assumed triangle. We don't know if it's a triangle. It looks like a triangle, but now it's actually kind of morphing into one of these triangles, okay? Um, but it's an assumed breakout, okay? So, but we don't get into this thing unless we get below the, the higher low, okay? 
Um, the next day, we got a little bit of a doji. Okay, so you can at this point, I would probably be redrawing the calendar, can, the the uh, the triangle, and adjust. It probably wouldn't adjust my one cancels uh, other contingent orders because we still have the the lower high and the higher low in place. Then we get <clears throat> then we get the big move. Okay, so we've got a breakout. Our order is. Um, filled for the calls, and what happens is because it's an OCO, a one cancels other order, to uh, the the put order is canceled, and now we are in calls. Hoping it goes up. Hopefully that's not false. Also, sometimes it is, and it comes back down. Okay. Normally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be position sized in a certain way that. Uh, allows me to get two times my my assumed risk. My assumed risk usually is going to be that level right there. Sometimes these things have a nasty habit of reversing back down and then going up. Okay, so there's another way to trade these things where some traders actually will wait, not on the breakout, but they'll actually wait for it to come back down and then bounce. Okay, but uh, but we're we're not we won't go into that. Okay, so here we have here we are. We're in calls. Uh, however long we're out. And, you know, again, that was definitely a false breakout, but now we're in the trade. And this is the successful, uh, this is the, the successful conclusion of this particular trade. What I normally do personally, if I happen to be trading directional on these things, or even in the, um, even in non-directional using, uh, using straddles and strangles, is I will put my take profit order, and it'll be a contingent order, my take profit usually is going to be at the top of the triangle. Okay, There's other people that will measure this right here, and they'll calculate 80% of that move and call it a measured move, and they'll put their, they'll just put their, their take profit on this. And again, my loss, my stop on this, um, Categorical stop from a, from a stock perspective. If the stock ever got below that, I would stop out. But I may probably even be stopped out before then, or manually stop myself out if uh, if my uh, my loss um, horizon is is met. Uh, usually, what I do is I I, I will plan my trades for fifty percent loss, and I'll and I'll take a profit with a partial. Uh, meaning usually about 60% of my trade I'll take off um, at a double and then I'll let it run to what my other target is and I'll just get out. Okay. But this is successful. Okay. So this, this was a successful triangle. Okay. Again, three points, one, two, three. These things are going to change. Mr. Market, Mrs. Market doesn't know uh, what we want and what we want doesn't necessarily pan out. Uh, we got one, two, three. Three, we go in, we have our directional trade, it goes up and it's successful, okay? But you also have to be ready to get out if it is not successful, meaning that the market doesn't agree with our fact that we thought it was a triangle, okay? Um, let's look at a real world, world case study. Uh, this is, uh, no, let me put a footnote on this. I did not trade this. I was watching it, I missed it, okay? But this happened very recently. And what I do is I like to look for opportunities. I keep an ongoing list of triangles. It's actually one of my favorite types of patterns. Um, and I set a sort um, to take a look at equities that have an abnormally low ADX. This is using a standard ADX of 14 periods. And I want to know if the ADX is less than 14. Okay, and that's going to set up a list of stocks. There's, I think, uh, today, or actually Wednesday of this week, um, there were maybe uh, 15 opportunities and they're really not opportunities. They were uh, stocks to eyeball and there's not really much in there. Uh, but this is one of the past ones in the, in the recent one. Okay. So MPC is a recent opportunity. So let's just go in and look at it. Um, the reason this came up is there's a sort. Okay. And this happened on December 3rd, uh, December 3rd. And you can see I've got my ADX. It's actually ADX and DMI. And uh, I just kind of, I, I took off the uh, the DMI, the directional movement indicators, just so, to, so it's clear because I'm not using that. I'm only using it as a sort, okay? So it hit the 
14 and lower. That means that things are starting to consolidate, but there's not really a clear triangle. So it just goes on my watch list. And I take a look at it every day or day or two to see if anything's happening. Oops. Uh, let's see. It can't be replayed. That's actually, I'll have to do that a try. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, so I take a look at it and I watch it <coughs> to see if anything is forming and see if I can just kind of eyeball something at a certain point. Now, at this point, this is starting to look like a pretty nice triangle. Okay, and I, there's a little triangle tool in Trading View. I can take a look at it um, and I can get pretty close to three points. Nothing's going to be perfect, but I can get three points on this or pretty close to three points on this, at least on one side, uh, more than three points on one side. Actually, it's three points. There's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's that's starting to look pretty interesting. And what I would be doing now at this point is saying, okay, where is my lower high? And where is my higher, I'm uh, sorry, where is my, my higher low and where is my lower high? Well, at this point, it's kind of, it's a little bit fuzzy, but my higher low, I'm sorry, my lower high is kind of right about in there. And my higher low is right about there. So that's kind of where my, my contingent orders would be in on this particular one. But we're getting kind of, we're not very close to that apex. So, you know, I, I might think about having these on here at this point, but what I'm going to be looking at also is where is my target? Okay. Now where my target is, is going to be, let's see, I got to find the right tool. My target is going to be about $8.28 on a $65 stock. That's more than 10%. So that actually is, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that target either up there in this area, or it could come down to this area if it breaks down at one point. Okay. So the question I have is, is there enough from here? Is there enough from this level to make any kind of profit to go from $65 up to 71? And I think I can probably make a little bit of money if I choose the, the, the correct expires. Now you're going to have, I'm going to have to do a video on expiries at another time, but uh, you know, you've got December 17th here and I really wouldn't be going, I, I would probably be going out here, way out here, if not into February, because it may take some time to do this. Um, as far as expiry. So it's, it's still a little early, but this is what I'd kind of be setting. I probably wouldn't have an order up here. I might set a contingent order down here because it's a little bit closer. Okay, so, so I just keep this sucker as a watch. And boom, look, here is a breakout and it goes past that, that area. Okay, so if I had a contingent order here, I would be in. Now the question is, is what happens? Okay, first of all, I'm in. Where would I be setting my loss? Well, I'd be setting my stop if I achieved either a fifty percent, um, either a fifty percent loss in my options, or if the stock went back up and crossed that line on a close. Okay. Um, now, the reason I'm mentioning that is that we went back in. And this is the risk of trading directional on, um, on triangles because you do get false breakouts on what you think might be a triangle. We're definitely in some kind of triangle, but we need to now adjust at this point. Now, I, I, I would be stopped out here. And, and I don't know how much there is a loss on here, but we're still in a triangle. And what's happened is... Okay, yes, we had that loss, but now here's where my contingent order is if it was going to happen, if I was going to be doing this. Okay, um, so that's one loss. 
And now the question is, okay, are we breaking out? Well, first of all, we have another point in our triangle. So our higher low is here. So this is, it needs to be fluid, okay? Um, do we have a breakout of the triangle? No, we do not. But it's starting to hone in a little bit, okay? False breakout, it didn't quite get there. Does the triangle need to be adjusted? Um, it could. Okay, so if I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, okay, if we get a breakout, maybe it's going to be more above here. And actually, now we're kind of going into this, what we started with the first video that I did, part one. And that's really kind of more of a, 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 um, a high base or a low base. Okay, it's kind of basing at this. But we're just still going to call it a triangle. Okay, but we still are in this thing. Okay, now here we have a breakout of all things. Okay, so so now where is it that we're going to set our target? We're going to set our target um, on a measured move and we're going to set that measured move right here. Okay, so assuming we're in calls, this is all done. Um, your stop, well, that's a little bit more difficult in this particular one, but uh, stop would be down here unless you get a 50%, or at least me personally, I get a 50% loss. Uh, so we're going to assume that I'm in calls here. Long position, and that long position would have been here. And my target is right up there, okay? Um, I generally like, you know, just if I was just trading the stock, I mean, it's that's there's a lot of loss. But you know, the question is, is whether I can get a double on this. Okay, so let's just take a look and let's pile that forward. Okay, there we are. Okay, so we had a breakout. So the big question is, is whether we had a double or not in those two days, and the, and. I don't know where that's going to be, but if it's a double or not, um, because I haven't checked it, but my hunch is it's a pretty good profit. We hit our target um, and I would be out of this trade. Okay. So again, there's a loss here on one because we got that false breakout and then there is a gain on the second one. So that's kind of how triangles work on the triangle consolidation is a little bit more complex. There is a, definitely a reason why I personally, it's just my own style, don't trade so much the directional ones, not unless we're like really close to the apex. Um, I much prefer uh, non-directional, meaning I'm going for uh, straddles and strangles. This particular one did not qualify for a straddle or a strangle. I would not have been into it. But again, it's just a real world example of how one would go about trading triangles and not only finding potential triangles by eyeballing, but also um, um, you know, how, you, how you manage an entry um, that is maybe a little bit more stacked in your favor, um, how you get out both at a loss and a, uh, and a gain. So hopefully this is of help. Um, I do love triangles. I trade them all the time. Um, I, there, it's another effective way, another effective tool to have in your toolbox. Um, there are times when they work really, really well. Um, there's times also you're going to make your losses, uh, you know. But but if you stack those stack those uh, those conditions in your favor, um, you know the, the the goal is to have well over 60% winners and less than 40% losers, and have your losers. Uh, be much lower in, uh, in in dollar value than your winners and having a good profit factor. So thank you very much. And uh, again, if you if you like this video and like this uh, like this uh, this concept, give it a thumbs up. We've got a couple of more to produce over the next uh, several days to uh, to have in your toolbox for you to review. If you got any questions? Just post it up on the uh, on the chat, and we'll uh, we'll answer. Or others that are, are involved in triangles will also answer. Cheers all.